question number 46, if you look at your exam review, asks us to state the domain of a function. And the type of function that we're looking at here is referred to as a rational function. The reason this is called a rational function is you have a numerator and a denominator, but more importantly, the denominator contains a variable. So rational function because it's the ratio of two polynomial functions. Your key here, when you're asked to find the domain of a rational function, your eye should turn your attention immediately to the denominator. In this particular problem, what we have in the numerator is really not of consequence. The numerator can become anything that we want it to become. That's not going to cause a problem. The problem here is going to occur if the denominator should become zero. So come with me to the paper. Let's go down to the paper and let's look at our function. We have the rational function f of x is equal to x plus 2 on the top, 15 minus 3x on the bottom. Now, the denominator is where we can run into trouble. This problem is pretty simple. If I asked you what would make this denominator become 0, even without factoring, you should be able to see that 5 would cause trouble. So in this particular denominator, in fact, for this problem in general, the denominator would become 0 if x was 5. Well, we can't let that happen. Remember, in arithmetic, you can't divide by 0. You can't let the denominator of a fraction become 0. So in this problem, we have trouble. We have a trouble spot at the number 5. So the way we write that in algebra, x cannot equal 5. Now I want you to notice something. Some students will look at this problem and look in the numerator and say, uh-oh, we can't let x be negative 2 either because that would cause the numerator to become 0. That's not a problem. If the numerator of a fraction is 0, we're okay. The denominator of a fraction can't be 0. So our trouble spot here is the number 5. So basically to answer this question, the domain here, what the domain is what you can use, what you're allowed to put in. The domain in this particular function could be any real number you want to use as long as you promise not to use 5. Part A of this problem asks us to write the domain using set builder notation. So the way we're going to write it is this. The set of all x's such that x cannot equal 5. And in English, the way you read this is, x can be any real number as long as you promise not to let it equal 5. So this is really the set of all real numbers except 5. And remember, this notation is called set builder notation. Part B of my question asks me to write the answer using interval notation. Now the way I like to teach my students to do that, let's draw a number line. And let's throw out the troubled number. In other words, I'm going to find 5, and I'm going to put an open circle there, which, which basically means I'm tossing it out. I'm going to keep all the numbers to the left of 5. I'm going to keep all the numbers to the right of 5, but I'm not keeping 5. So let's look at our little picture that will help us write the interval notation. We have the region to the left of 5, we have the region to the right of 5. This region to the left of 5 could be written as paren negative infinity comma 5. We put a paren on the 5 because again remember what a paren means. 5 is not included. The region to the right of 5 is going to be written paren 5 comma positive infinity and then the symbol that you put between these two is going to be the union symbol, which really represents the word or. So 
negative infinity to 5 union 5 to infinity is the way that we would write the domain of this rational function using interval notation. Most important thing to remember in this problem, when you're given a rational function and you're asked for the domain, your eyes should focus on the denominator and you throw out any numbers that would make the denominator become zero.